It is just a huge honor for me to bring on a very close and dear friend of mine, Dr. Marcin Delecki, DDS. He's a 1990 graduate of the Medical University of Lotz, Poland, runs a private practice in Linigawa, Poland. For over 25 years, he has been national and international lecturer, author of numerous publications, including two books, Teeth Whitening and Marketing and Management in the Dental Office, former editor and translator of CRA Newsletter with Old Gordon, is also a recognized authority in the translation of lectures and presentations in the field of dentistry taking place in the country and abroad. He's a certified IAO senior instructor and fellow. Uh, that's the International Academy of Orthodontics. His practices is limited to orthodontics and chirodontics, multidisciplinary holistic approach to human health. For over 20 years, he teaches holistic neuroorthodontics and nutrigenomics to general dentists and chiropractors and coordinates Polish International Association of Orthodontics Section. The International Association for Orthodontics was founded in 1961 to ensure quality orthodontic care by general and pediatric dentists. In order to reach this goal, the IAO offers a wide array of orthodontic continuing education courses through the IAO annual meeting, its IAO certified instructors, recognized study clubs, and affiliated sections. Today, the IO has approximately 4,000 member dentists in over 60 countries and is the oldest non-specialty orthodontic association in existence, and their headquarters is at Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And the guy that started all those associations out of Milwaukee, he started the AACD, he started so many of the things that we uh, all take for granted. How are you doing, Marchin? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Um, um, I don't know about over there, but um, in the United States, we're having this little uh, virus thing going around. I don't know if uh, you've heard about it or not. Uh, yes, we did a little bit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but they're ruining our lives in very different ways, and we have to adjust like human beings doing from the decades and centuries. Sometimes, you know, the, 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 we, we can only think about crazy politics dictating people what to do and what not to do and not listening to real science at all. Sometimes they are changing their minds after the situation is going painful. Ah, story of the human civilization, if you may say. I know. And uh, my gosh, no one knows this more than anyone from Poland because the United States was lucky. It's in, uh, It's got an ocean on um two sides it's got Canada yeah. to the north Poland my gosh you were in the crossroads of Russia and Prussia and Germany and Austria I mean gosh and anybody who's a student of history knows that 5,000 years of history government will always let you down they're never they're never your friend and ally they're always the <laughs> worst part of, of life but what yeah. I loved about um what I did know in economics the law of unintended consequences is that you'll do something and you won't realize that it will cause something else. And I never guessed in my wildest dreams when I gave my first lecture, January 4th, 1990, that it would mean that um, 30 years later, um, I would uh, go around the world and going to Poland and staying with you in your house. I mean, what, what I learned the most from that is that there's 8 billion people with 2 million dentists, and the dentists are always the top, two or three percent in years of education probably top five percent in years of education income knowledge i mean i just got schooled uh it was so amazing but what i also liked is you know how some people like um um they like uh to see different architecture they like to see different art and things like that i love to see how dentists who read all the same books from pierre fichard to gv black to whatever they see the same exact scientific problem and their amazing minds see it differently. And my God, if I ever met a, an amazing mind uh, in Europe, it, it had to be you. And that's why I loved what you're doing with, with natural and chirodontics, even your approach to this vaccine. Um, but where, where does that thinking outside the box come from? Probably uh, it was... Uh... You know, I, I usually say that I some people are lucky at the card games. Sometimes people are lucky in the gambling. I have huge luck uh, meeting my mentors. I had usually when you uh, 
you have probably the same kind of experience when you learn your profession, when you try to feed your mind, hungry mind with new data. Sometimes it's like hit and miss situation. Sometimes uh, you stand up after, I don't know, 30 minutes of lecture or first 100 pages of the new dental book and said, it's not for me. It's not my word. It's not fitting to my... Uh, I, I usually say that I every person who has uh, three decades of uh, personal professional uh, experiences has uh, built his own uh, snowman. You know, ball of snow from Professor X, ball of snow from Howard Ferran, ball of snow from Brock Rondeau, Brock, and so and so and so. And you create your own snowman who, who is practically individual. And probably I had huge luck because uh, in a 90 something percent of my experience, percent of my experience when well, well, it, coming to education, I had usually huge luck to have uh, some person or author or, 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 or mentor, you may say, we said, wow, it's something brand new. I knew I, I want more. And I had huge luck to make you because you were the person who kicked me to the way to uh, see whole different things because you said, you know what? After I wrote uh, wrote the book about marketing and management uh, in dentistry, which was most of ideas were stolen from you. And I said, wow, I dedicate to this guy because at least this, this is what, what can I do? It was the first book of, of uh, marketing and management dentistry after the fall of communism in the middle of Europe. And uh, you said, when you came to Poland, you said, the only thing missing in these peoples, these young men coming around my hotel was fixed appliances or so don't take appliances. You have to uh, invite here Brock Rondo who is teaching orthodontics to GPs, functional orthodontics to GPs, okay. And uh, one thing led to another. I came to Brock to Canada and I saw his uh, uh, records and suddenly I found out that besides of orthodontics, he has huge uh, drawings of the human posture and he said nothing about it in Poland when he was doing the lectures and I said, what is this? Oh, it's chirodontics. It's body posture connection. It's so difficult. Don't touch it. I said, what? We broke the communism. I was the first person to write a book about tooth bleaching in the middle of Europe. I was the first person who ever touched problem of, of marketing management dentistry after fall of communism. And I can at least try this? No. I had to. And uh, I asked uh, um, Bob Walker, the founder of Kyrodontics and, and creator of Kyrodontics, to send me a set of video cassettes. Yes, young man. It was something like this these days. And uh, suddenly uh, I was scared. I was scared as hell because I never thought that I will, should learn neurology, uh, proprioception. Uh, all the postural mechanisms, fascist muscles in a level of the practicing chiropractor, physiotherapist, neurologist, and so and so and so. And once I tr tried these things, and suddenly most of our case, my, our cases went for, to another level when I was treating uh, uh, these things. Uh, September 11 came. And suddenly our lecturers from states were scared to fly by plane to give a lectures and teach orthodontics to Polish dentists. So, and we had a group ready to be, uh, uh, to, to maintain all the course. And suddenly they said, somebody has to do this. I was translating this course for, I don't know how many times. So I can probably do the course alone. I said, give me the slides, yes. These days there were slides, not computer CDs or DVDs or pen drives or anything. And suddenly I started teaching orthodontics. And from this point, my students sent me all the most difficult cases to me. Because easy cases were, yeah, 
easy to handle, very satisfying, but suddenly I needed more answers. And I returned to this chirodontic stuff and I started painful in the beginning, but very satisfactory uh, road to understand how the human body works. And after a few years, I invited Bob Walker to lecture in Poland for many times. And he told us not only because he's he's a crazy person, he is thinking outside the box all the time. And I started to think, okay, once I've learned neurology and basic chiropractic chiro practicing stuff, because he said, funny thing that most difficult orthodontic cases are easy chiro chiropractic cases and vice versa. And you are in the States are very fortunate to have a chiropractor office very close to the dental office. The problem is that you are not saying to each other more than hello, which is very painful because it's satisfactory for both of us and you can achieve fantastic results with the cooperation. So I have learned this chirodontics and chiropractic part for myself. But Bob told me a little bit of acupuncture, a little bit about neurology, a huge, huge big time about biochemistry. And after that, he started talking about genomics. And suddenly, uh, it was like uh, the first time I came to, to see Grand Canyon. There are bushes, 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 very nice. <gasps> suddenly, wow. And this was probably the best explanation how I touch everything. And suddenly, once you know something about, for example, acupuncture, you want to learn more. Suddenly, uh, when people are saying that, for example, when you uh, want to achieve the perfect bite, perfect position of mandibular in space, you have to deprogram the muscles. And all the deprogrammers are usually taking time from two weeks to, I don't know, like 10 to 20 minutes. And suddenly acupuncture is doing this in 15 seconds. And suddenly you can fix with this acupuncture also very various uh, metabolic issues. Uh, suddenly when you uh, touch this one, suddenly you find out that not everything is connected to the muscles, to teeth, to perfect occlusion. And more and more important thing is neural. Now my courses are called neuroorthodontics because I am repeating by many friends from Korea and Asia, it's all about the brain. And if you, I can say only one quote about this, what I'm doing is all about the brain because every single reflex and body is basically a system of Reflect reflexes and balancing the, or, or getting out of the balance of this reflex is all about energy, it's all about electromagnetics, it's all about uh, uh, all about nerves. And once I touched uh, genomics, suddenly find out that, I don't know if you know it, Howard, that uh, the most dangerous uh, profession to the human being, number one, is being dentist or dental stuff. Most toxic profession in the planet is made by most, as you said, the most smart, educated people on the planet. And that's why I created a separate course for uh, all the dentists, not even uh, interested in this crazy holistic uh, approach to, to human health through the bite, of course, uh, is uh, that uh, uh, how to protect yourself, how to survive being dentist, because it's not the point. I should, I think that it's, it should be now. It shouldn't be our goal to have the most prestigious place in a cemetery. Really, location, location, location. Yes, I know, Howard. You you repeated it that many times, but you know, it's not the point. Life should be fascinating the way here, today, now, in this second, because this is the most important part of life. So I started to uh, 
create all the protocols for de detoxification, uh, which is adjusted to our uh, personal uh, genome mutation, which are, uh, after that, suddenly I find out that like creators of the human genome map, that genes are only 19% of our destination. What we are doing with these genes is the other 81%. So I started to uh, work in deeply and learn epigenomics, which is nutrition, which is uh, stress reduction, chronic stress reduction. And suddenly I find out that most orthodontic cases or the uh, uh, malocclusions are basically the consequence of uh, traumas, emotional traumas in early during pregnancy, even before pregnancy, during the first, some of the authors say four years of life or six years of life, uh, persistent primitive reflexes like Moro, like Galland, like many others, which are setting our nerves and muscles and posture in a bad uh, pathological uh, reflex sy uh, uh, system. And suddenly all the body, instead of being like this, is going like this. The other reason I started all this journey was purely personal. I was suffering for deep asthma. I was allergic as hell. My wife's spine was in ruin 30 years ago. And I said, no. And they, everybody, every doctor said that it's chronic disease and I should probably give up and get used to this. And I said, I don't like it. I have to do something, something else. And I started to, to do this only for personal reasons. So that's my story. And here now, uh, the most, uh, I'm laughing that, for example, the usually what's, in numbers, what the biggest number of, of dental supply you use? Of course, in orthodontics, you should think about besides the gloves or cotton rolls, you say probably brackets or something like this. And by number, this is something I'm using the most. Oh, there you go. This is our, 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 our oh, sorry, auriculotherapy uh, ear magnets which are gorgeous stuff because it's a, uh, it's, a, it's a tool for muscle relaxation. It's a tool for many chronic diseases. It's a tool for balancing the system. For example, uh, I, I, I was learning last year during the COVID pandemic, I started to uh, uh, learn more neurology and I started to connect the dots because nobody is really uh, releasing people from persistent uh, primitive reflexes with the auricular therapy. I didn't find it anywhere in the internet. One guy in the States doing this by needles, but needles, as you may say, the patients are a little bit afraid of needles and something like this is more delicate. And I can leave the patient with these magnets for weeks and this way we can fix tons of neurological issues after that i found out for example uh, a guy uh, pierre hubert dupas which is uh, uh, the um, uh, guy the, the big guy in dentistry in lille in france who uh, showed me the exact pathway where the body po bite posture mechanism is going from the balance to be cricket in every possible way. And do, is, do, is, is basically connected uh, our bite, our vestibular system, and our sight, our eyes, and all the brain uh, parts which are managing the, the, our, our seeing, our view. And uh, uh, all these impulses are going through uh, the reticular formation. It's like a uh, cone. And is gathering all this data and then modulating in order to keep everything in balance. And this is going down by the accessory 
11th cranial nerve is going there. And every, when everything is balanced, it's everything okay. But why, when even one system is going out of the balance, whether it's the eyes, sight, whether it's our bite, or even our through limbic system, our emotions, everything else is going to ruin. And this way, uh, you can uh, probably understand why I started to correct even uh, the emotional traumas, which are deeply uh, uh, hidden in our subconsciousness. Because, and suddenly, my t hopeless TMJ cases went to very easy cases, or, or symptoms are gone throughout, I don't know, five or 10 minutes cor correction using various techniques uh, uh, like Psyche, for example, Rob Williams. Of course, I touched uh, um, very, various authors like Rob Williams, Bob, many thing, people from New Biology, uh, uh, various, various authors who are some, um, I want more. It, probably the failures, are the best, I don't know if you agree with me, Howard, that uh, the failures are the best teachers. Once you cannot solve any pro some problem, you have to find out the solution. If you don't know the solution, it means it's not a hopeless case. You probably didn't ask the right question or you don't have enough knowledge to solve it. So you have to learn more. And this is like, uh, like avalanche. Once it started, it's going, 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 and gathering new information. That's that's how I, I because because of I am a fan of difficult cases, probably. <laughs> so I, I love um, you know um, like going around the world. There's so many different views. You got these very smart dentists looking at the same thing, and they come to different verticals. <laughs> Even in the practice manual, like I notice when you go to like. Um, Cambodia and Malaysia and Myanmar and things like that. The, the towns have a dental hospital. I mean, there's a tall 10 story building yeah. that says dental mm -hmm. hospital and every floor is oral surgery, perio, endo. Well, I've never seen that in the United States of America. And um, um, I love what you're talking about because um, in a, in a very sacred sovereign profession, um, you're just, you're, you're told just to everybody think the same, everybody get in line. And I just love it when people like you have just the, the guts to, to freely think. And, and, um, I, I just, I just That's really, great. really love it. And, and some, and some of it is, um, and I always find it embarrassing that a lot of these fundamental questions don't even come within dentistry. Like it's been anthropologist who have been knocking on our door saying, Excuse me, but th this whole orthodontic thing, uh, we don't see this in um, once you got a 500-year-old human going back to 3 million years. No, uh, no. Talk about that. You know, it's a, it's a very... I, I mean, why, why, why didn't we know that? Why, why, I mean, if you get a degree in orthodontics, shouldn't you have known yeah. the difference between or malocclusions and uh, Neanderthal and Denosovans? And I mean, why did a is, damn anthropologist uh, have to tell an orthodontist that something's wrong with all your theories? No, 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 no. Because usually most of these people who are trying to say that probably... Uh, it's like Mike Mew, uh, yeah. Or son of yeah, Mew. Mike Mew, He's the New York Times article. That we are we are doing harm to society uh, because of culture. Uh, for cultural reasons, we are doing things which are harmful. As like you said, the people are not buying what they need; they buying what they want, and the culture more role models saying. Do the tattoo, fill your lips with some toxic things, and not to mention to inject the poison to paralyze your Botox poison. It's 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 a, it's, it's it's toxin. You hear it? Toxin. You put it here, and you paralyze your muscles. The toxin is going into your brain. And do you want to do this any other way? It's very easy. I'm doing this for years. It's so-called uh, 
the cell orthodontics uh, uh, makeup or, or uh, 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 plastic surgery through orthodontics, when you, op you open the bite, you're doing neuromuscular deprogramming and suddenly all the wrinkles are smooth, the faces look beautiful, uh, you don't extract teeth, especially bicuspids, so the profile is full, and you don't have to inject bad stuff here. And when you ask any decent, not only anthropologist, but physiotherapist, reflexology specialist, uh, neurology specialist, putting here something toxic, is probably the stupidest thing from the human standpoint or our human body standpoint. The other thing is that when you, for example, see the maps of face reflexology, like you have of, uh, reflex points on hands, on tongue, on your feet, or in many places of, of human body, that here, this region is basically connected with a small intestine and large intestine. When you put toxins here, or you inject anything, even hyaluronic acid, not, you're not only paralyzing uh, uh, all, all these receptors, but you're influencing the uh, condition and the metabolism of your guts. And your guts are the gates to your body. You, it's like, like, like border control when you, uh, you ignore the bad stuff and only absorb the good stuff. You should do this. And this makes a totally no sense, but we are stop, unfortunately, uh, probably uh, we as a human being, we, we stopped uh, thinking about the, what, what's good for human being, what's good for our um, society, what is good for our civilization to thrive. It's only, I don't know, probably you, you have the best, Example here in your United States, when when profit overcame uh, everything, and finally, I, I I was watching many documentary series about middle class collapse in the United States. When suddenly, uh, uh, two generations before, uh, a man working in the factory can send two kids to college and uh, build some decent house and. Uh, to, to do the right thing. Now it's gone. It's gone because the, 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 all the wealth in the world is collected by a very tiny person not taking care of uh, other people. And same situation is everywhere. We have stopped thinking about our mm, well-being. Probably it's the best, the, the best description. And, and I am I'm, uh, in a fortunate situation and I'm not in a system I don't have to, of course, I, as you can imagine, sometimes uh, somebody who's standing out is, is have a painful kicks from left to right, but still, uh, it's like, well, it's who I am. It's, it's very, very hard to me to, 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 to stop doing this. But, but here's why I love you so much. I mean, so, um, I mean, so the New York Times is a big article on this, um, um, it's called How Two British Orthodontists Became Celebrities. Um, and um, here, here they go get, and, and here's the quotes. They go, um, when I mentioned Dr. Mew to a prominent American orthodontist, he cut me off. John Mew is an idiot, he said, a total idiot. And, and um, I mean, Kevin O'Brien, a leading academic orthodontist in the UK. I, I mean, um, it just takes guts to stand up in front of a wall of people, of momentum, and say, can mm -hmm. we just talk about this other thing? And, and I want you to go back to, um, I want you to go back to it for people who um, aren't on top of orthodontics or this article. Um, how do you describe that New York Times article, how two British orthodontists became uh, celebrities? Um, the, the John Mew is a 91-year-old orthodontist. Can yeah. you succinctly yeah. explain to the, the reader, the listeners, um, who this guy is, who this 91 year old orthodontist is and what you think of it and what his views are, uh, what you think of it. He, he, he became, he's, he became in, in a victim of extraction, uh, retraction dentistry. And he is the one of the, he, he doesn't care. He is that old. He has, he lives in an old castle 
<laughs> in great, beautiful place. And once you listen to him, I have huge luck to twice to invite him to, to Poland to and translating him. Uh, he is a great guy because he's totally out of the box. And he said, like his son, Mike Mew, who invented mewing, something which is vi went viral on the internet in YouTube and you face when you type mewing, it's like going crazy. People are in enhancing their health, enhancing the profiles, just putting tongue on the palate where it belongs, big time. And <laughs> all the speech therapists will say you, uh, the same thing. And suddenly extraction, retraction dentistry have only one thing in mind, short case, um, how you say to sell the case? Yes, in English. Uh, it's not that treat the patient. You are not longer doctor, you're salesman. Okay, if you're, it's your path, I'm, you know, I'm old enough and, and bold enough to say that uh, I'm not here to judge anybody. I am saying that these guys are trying to uh, put the, in somebody's mind that, that once you Put somebody in braces, extract, and you don't care about anything else but straining the teeth, you just ruin some pathological but still functioning balance. Because people are crooked in every other way, functionally bad, dentally bad, skeletally bad, uh, muscle is out of the balance, but still is it's like balance here or balance here is balance. And people are doing this for many, many years. Of course, it's like driving, uh, I don't know, 24 hours Le Mans or uh, Indianapolis or anywhere else, 500, with a car which has a chassis out of the balance. The wheels are totally not the in the place that they should be. And they you go and then you say to the driver, drive as fast as they can. So this is the history of humankind. And all that John Mew and Mike Mew, his son, is doing, they try to promote a uh, totally different approach when you uh, guide the growth of mandibula, first maxilla, then mandibula, to the right level, to the right uh, size, to the light the right uh, position in space uh, is the best, probably the best person who said it shortly is Bob Walker in Chirodontics. First, you, um, you have to see where the maxilla is in space. Is it leveled or is it canted in any place? A roll, pitch, and yaw, like in the plane, three-dimensional, it's very easy should be level to the camper plane, to the TMJ, to the um, base of the skull, level. Any, do you know any carpenter which is saying, okay, this is the door frame, this is the door, and we'll keep it that way for as long as these doors should open and close, open and close, open and close. What? If this carpenter is sober enough to know what he's doing, probably said, well, you know, Ask another guy, I won't do this. I won't sign my name on it. It's a bad thing. And the dentist all over the place just, the so-called extraction, retraction, orthodontic is just, I don't know, sometimes you have an X, you have to cut a little bit there and then push these doors with your knee to the door frame and hold it for the rest of his life of these doors, uh, creating tension in a, uh, hinges in a door frame, in a wall, on all the all the construction, and that these doors shouldn't last that long as it should be. Lifetime, no, but no lifetime guarantee. So this is the probably and, and Mike Mew saying, okay, you put these braces, you ruin your health because you just adjusting beautiful look. It's all about the culture. You ruin everything else. You you create forces you cannot control. That's why lifetime retention is, is mandatory after all the orthodontic treatment, standard orthodontic treatment. 
and and then probably we'll see another 10 or 20 years mike Muir said that he will be probably the bad prophet that our uh, gum issue bone issue of these people massively treated with uh, fixed appliances will probably show what we've done to the human population with this but it's probably not the first time when culture and uh, greediness probably leads us to the bad solutions. Of course, I'm using fixed appliances, but I'm using it a little different way. I'm first, I level the bytes like, like doors to the door frame. Then I release the doors. To, so mandibula is going where? I ask the body where the mandibula, mandibula should be. And I verify it with a number of neurological tests, which are saying me, good job, or try another bad, bad thing. And of course, I verify it with the eyesight. I verify it with the neurological tests. My body should be straight, solid, not swinging like leave on a during windy day on a tree. No, rock solid body. Then I know that I've done a good job. Sure, I'm not uh, forgetting about cosmetics. I, I usually create wonderful smiles and very, an orthodontic lifting is very popular among the, my ladies uh, uh, patients because they are love it that suddenly all these wrinkles are gone. Face look at least 10 to 20 years younger than before. And the face is getting older, much slower. So everybody's happy. So could you briefly um, describe what the main rules of chirodontics are? Sure. So, First somebody's thing. never. I, I guarantee a lot of people listening sure. have never even heard the word. Sure. It's connection of chiropractic and also dentists. And first thing is you have to have proportion, golden proportion, 162 to 1. Of course, it's no golden proportion. Divine proportion is known well before the Great Wall of China was built. So, you know, it's it's from probably as long as human civilization. We know that the golden divine proportion is everywhere from DNA to AKG, uh, drawing to galactics, wherever you find that the divine proportion, okay? You have Josh Jefferson talking about it uh, according to orthodontics. And then, second thing is that uh, you have to have per well rounded Roman uh, arch uh, of the, or you, all the three parts of the face should be more, more or less equal. And all the muscles in this situation, all the nerves should be neutral. So once the body is going through inhalation or exhalation, all the parts of the skull and the maxilla and the mandibula are, go are in phase, in synchronicity with the all the body. So when you breathe in, all the maxilla is expand. When you breathe out, it's collapsing. And maxilla is going like this and this. Mandibula inhalation is going down and back and exhalation is going forward. So mandibula is connected with the uh, back of the skull, an occipital bone and TMJ. And once you have, for example, class two retrognathic people are usually caught in an inhalation phase. So all the body is going to inhalation, <laughs> but when the body is going to exhalate, <sighs> mandibula is not going like this. Of course, I'm exaggerating because this movement is not that huge in average person. I want to show you the mechanism. So it's trapped. The mandibula is trapped in an inhalation phase. Same thing is in the maxilla. When it's in inhalation, it's look like this, it's, it's very narrow. 
when it's exhalating, it's going like this. The upper incisors are collapsed. So you can find out, is it exhalation or inhalation? So you're going into the neurological harmony with the rest of the body. Second thing is that the perfect Roman arch to the uh, uh, R bites, maxilla and mandibula, is uh, very, very uh, close to the neurological form. So once you have perfect round arch to, uh, according to the uh, schwartz korkhaus analysis, you're also going to the so-called neutral, so golden balance between, be, be in, in the shape of arch. So you can ask the body throughout the treatment all the time, are you going to the right balance between inhalation and exhalation, all the parts of the body? Second thing is that once you have achieved perfect level of the maxilla and perfect shape of the maxilla, so it's not like this, it's beautiful around an arch. The second thing is you're asking mandibula when, where you want to be, not where uh, the doctor wants to be, where you want to be, according to all the neurological tests, stability, and, and the body says like, here, 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 here. Okay. And you try to adjust the teeth to look great, but to be in level with the base of the skull, with the TMJ, with the camper uh, plane, uh, tragosalus, this, this camper plane. You try to level it as much as possible and find out because it's the best part of the deal should be like this, should be like this, not like this, not like this, not like this, no, here. And when you listen, for example, to Professor Rocabado, you will find out that every three millimeters of roll distortion of your plane, Makulza plane, will lead to C1, C2, one millimeter uh, distortion. And once you have unstable, connection between skull and your spinal column, you will never have a stable result of orthodontic treatment. So the biggest issue I am now, nowadays, I'm looking at the cephalometric tracings or x-rays before and after is curvature and stability of the connection between base of the skull uh, and uh, C1, C2 uh, uh, vertebra, because it's the best uh, prognosis whether it will be stable or not. So actually, there are three basic rules of chirodontics. First, where the maxilla is in space, level the maxilla, then ask where the mandibula wants to be, not where you want to be, when the maxilla wants to be, and then fill it with the teeth, Level to the plane of with a plane of occlusion to the camper maxima. It's the, probably the easiest explanation of chirodontics. Of course, when you're dealing with a bed bite, in a 90 something percent of the cases, you have also crooked uh, cranium. And in chirodontics, uh, you use osteopathic techniques to correct uh, the uh, skull distortions, cranium distortions. But you can also do this, for example, with uh, modified appliances, and you can do this uh, various, there are many, various approaches, but it's great to have a, a door frame, not crooked, not curved, but on a level. More you adjust, more you go into chirodontics, uh, then you, of course, it's like level one, level two, level three. Level one, you try to do this mechanically. Level two, you find out, okay, I will do the cranium. Okay, great. There are patients looks better, feel better. Uh, the Probably the most important part of the bite stability after uh, the orthodontic treatment is going, pr probably in the 90% of the cases, you don't need actually the retainers really or doing the retainers just to control. I usually do, uh, put the uh, uh, leave patients with the clear retainers 
yeah, in a first year to be sure that they get used to this and they, they don't leave it. And um, after that, I'm saying that you can do it any other day, any third day, you leave it only at night. And after that, you just put it in your closet, in your, in your bathroom, and check once a month, is it fitting or not? When it's not fitting, it's the clear sign that you have go to chiropractor, you go to the physio, neurophysiotherapist, you have great neurophysiotherapists in the United States, they're doing PDTR, proprioceptive uh, deep tendon reflex technique. It's gorgeous. You, you can fix many, many issues with it. So once you're dealing with, a, uh, uh, with, with orthodontics or bite rehabilitation, PDTR specialists can be a huge, huge, huge allies in your office, really. And then once you find out that something with your, for example, I don't know, tooth are bad or usually the, the, the relapses around the tooth. First, you have to stable your posture. Then you can wear this clear liner for, I don't know, two or three months uh, in between meals. And suddenly these tooth are back in a place. So it's, it's gorgeous. Of course, once you finish the level one, you find out, is there any other way I can improve my practice or, or stability of this case. And suddenly you find out the beautiful world of acupuncture or oral, oral kilo. Oh, sorry. It's a state. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit evening in Poland. Oral kilo therapy. So ear acupuncture. Uh, because it's once you do this, um, another couple of per percent uh, of the cases are going way more stable because you eliminate tensions. Uh, deep hidden in a, in a, in your body in your system after that suddenly you find out okay once the the the, the Uber Dupa in France said that we have uh, sight you have vestibular system and you have by proprioceptors and when you find out for example you search the web and see the homunculus uh, 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 represented reflex and sensory re representation of a, of a human uh, brain. And you find out that the most attention in percentage of the human brain, sensory and motor, is put into the stomatognathic system, our mouth. One, one third of our proprioceptors are located here. The other third is our in the, in the hand and feet, in the other third is the rest of the body. And you find out, and suddenly, the mouth is number one. I don't say that mouth rules all the time, but it's, it's the ruler, main ruler, you may say. And after that, once you find out, you probably find, okay, once I'm dealing with the vestibular system, what can I do? Of course, you can go to, go to a, a neurologist. But uh, this acupuncture is probably the most efficient when you have uh, uh, problems with the neurology. And I, I found out the technique when, uh, when these things can fix the problems the people have for years in, in a 15 minutes or so. And this is the, all, all the stuff. Ma main neurological issues are really, uh, beautiful treated with this. After that, you find out that you have problems with your sight. Usually, the biggest uh, problems are uh, connected with the cranium distortions because you're uh, once you have uh, a crooked uh, skull, you have crooked uh, eyeballs, so you cannot expect pe people to, to to look to see properly. After that, especially when you can. Well, they ask patient to close one eye, left or right. All right. If he's capable to doing this, it's great. But in many times, they cannot. And I will say you that it's my uh, eureka for I don't know last six months that they, they are mainly uh, emotional issues, and they are huge problems connected with a bite with emotional issues. Once you have a test by Dupa, it's very easy to, to do this. Just 
order patient to close like this hands and the fingers should be even or do it like this should be even it's not okay put the cotton roll in in between teeth they are going bigger even okay that's good it's bite and you fix the bite when you put the cotton rolls in between the back teeth and they are going even okay it's tmj when you close they close eyes and the hands are getting even this is the sight when the, it's not nothing's working you order people to bend all the way the head all the way back and when the hands are getting even it's a postural thing and you or order people to go to the chiropractor pdtr specialist or anybody who can fix the posture but in the main cases, it's uh, it's a mixed. Usually, it's the mixed situation. When when you have problems with eyes, uh, you have you have ortho, uh, you 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 can to turn them to the eye specialist, uh, orthoptist, or for example, sometimes when the people are not closing one or they cannot, they are not able to close one eye. Usually, I will probably uh, make the, 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 the consultation with a psychologist or, for example, psyche specialist or anybody who is do, dealing with uh, uh, psychosomatic uh, issues because they are big time. There are tons of articles these days who are connecting TMJ issues with uh, emotional traumas. And the bites issues are so connected with this. A symmetry, when for example, one side of the teeth are connecting beautiful in months and you're struggling with a good intercuspidation in the, on the other side. In 90% of the cases, they are demotions, nothing else, nothing like And they are easy to correct, for example, I am doing this with a psyche because it's the easiest thing. And people are very, very grateful because Suddenly, all the tension, overall tension, because you, you all the reflexologists, uh, physiotherapists, and other people are saying that uh, uh, most common diseases of the ninety of twenty first century are the, uh, the the main cause is a chronic stress, and the chronic stress is hidden inside of us, and now when we have proofs. Uh, from epigenetics, when we tested the victims of great hunger in the Netherlands, victims of Holocaust, and a few, many generations, the same metabolic issues are uh, found generation after generation after generation. So we have proofs now that these things, which are uh, psychological, people are uh, specialists are saying for decades that uh, we uh, um, we have heritage of traumas and we have to once you want to have a, a well balanced body and mind you have to deal with these traumas and you can clear these traumas it's not that very difficult you can of course you have to find out first the cause of this trauma you have to specify what the exact kind of trauma it is but main reason is usually the chronic stress so it's a it's it's a fascinating trip, really, for me. I, I never expected that I will learn that much uh, at that age after so many years in profession, and basically I still this hunger. My dopamine level probably is way high because I want more. Now I'm I'm dealing with the cycle. Then, for example, I try to now to 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 connect with us because, for example are open bites, skeletal open bites, usually are connected with uh, rare for collapsing. And I'm now uh, trying to learn as much as pathology spe specialists can make me uh, teach about how to adjust for orthotics, because usually I just refer people to make good, uh, 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 especially when the people have class two, diff two, uh, malocclusion or uh, open bite, which is basically connected with this SEM muscle hyperactivity, which is making our face longer together with uh, immune issues 
or gut issues because this it's the same. So I, I, I learn more and more about microbiota, not only gut my, microbiota, but only also uh, uh, our lungs microbiota, skin microbiota, because they are, have huge, huge role, play a huge role. Uh, the ones, the specialists say that 70% of our immunity is, is our gut because we have only, uh, we, we have tons of tons of tons of bacteria fungus and stuff like this living inside and outside of us. And they are deciding uh, about health. But this is the level one. Level, so level one is mechanics. When the mechanism is uh, uh, stable enough, you can go further. Deal with the nerves. When you're dealing with nerves, you can deal with biochemistry, emotions, meridians, stuff like this. It's totally fascinating stuff. Um, I can't believe uh, we've gone over an hour. I must keep you for some overtime because I know a lot of dentists over here uh, want to, um, they're still in that pandemic mode and you had some very outside the box thoughts on the, the pandemic and the vaccine and the dentist right now. Oh, the, you know, when you check the vitamin D, vitamin D level, when you have one point, 25 hydroxy D3 level adjusted, you don't have COVID, period. And there are scientific proofs that the scientific articles. I so don't I, I, uh, I want to I ask you specifically, are you going to take the vaccine yourself? You look beautiful, Howard. <laughs> Can we talk about something? I say, I, I will I, I answer you that way. Uh, well, and, and let me ask oh, 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 excuse me. Oxford <laughs> immunologists, professors from Oxford University. A uh, couple of months ago, I don't know, September, October, stuff like this, they published the declaration where they say that uh, if you want to, they do the, 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 the declaration to address to the, all the powers that be in the world. You, If you want to stop the pandemics, I don't know, two, three months, you just supply all the human being, even without checking hydroxy D3 level in the blood, uh, supply every uh, adult person with a 4,000 unit D3 a day, and pandemic will disappear. Well, Martin, you I, I believe in immunologists. That's yeah, it. Um, well, you're, um, you're on the than the the eastern hemisphere i mean we we're, we're, um, the americas are just 1 billion out of 8 billion people uh, it's almost like a rounding error but you're over there in the heat of europe and you're right next to russia would you have faith in um russia's sputnik um uh, vaccine w would you put that as a, um you know the same as moderna pfizer um uh, what what do you think of uh, sputnik's uh, russia's sputnik vaccine I have no enough data, you know. I'm not judging. Um, life told me not to judge anything or anybody with the insufficient data. And I don't have enough data to have my own opinion. I don't tell you. Because, you know, first it was like question of uh, propaganda, as usual. Because they started first vaccination with the Sputnik uh, before anybody else. But still, uh, is it good? Is it bad? Is it harmful? Uh, once you, the, the, the funniest part of all this thing is that the profit generating from these vaccines is sky high, sky high. I remember when I was uh, traveling as a tourist uh, around the millionaire island in, uh, uh, in Miami on the boat, tourist boat, and they showed us this luxury uh, mansions on the bridge of the bank of this this island, and the biggest one was, of course, the former CEO of pharmaceutical company. And once the still the profit, not the human well-being, will uh, be main driver for uh, activity of these companies. I will be very very cautious because still I don't have enough data. I have data that well-known gorgeous stuff like d3 
vitamin C, zinc. These are the things who have well-proven uh, efficiency against coronavirus and the COVID-19 also. The second thing is ozone. I don't know if you use ozone in your practice because in states they are, I don't know why, ozone has a bad press. But you have the art, I, I read the article, I don't know, it was like in the middle of last year when the uh, New York uh, hospital published that, 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 that they used so-called enriched oxygen, not to use the word ozone, uh, which is great to kill the inf in, uh, infection. I have the device with the ozone in my, uh, in my house, in my office, of course, and I use it mm, different ways, uh, like ear infl implantation and rectal implantation because they are the most uh, efficient ways to put the ozone. And this is the, probably the best thing you can imagine. It's the simplest thing. And you are, for example, close to Cuba, closer, very close to Cuba, and they're they using ozone for, I don't know, 40 years or so. They are professor, the, the lady, Professor Menendez, is using ozone for various things. And the American uh, doctors are coming there to Cuba to go there. And no? Cuba has the highest cure rate for lung cancer in the world. Like in America, it's something like 5% live five years. In Cuba, it's something like uh, 25 or 30%. They have very good health care. Even, uh, uh, even they have limited resources, but they they develop and they they really thinking about the uh, clinical outcomes very, very well. So it's not that black and white world that we're living in. So, so Martin, uh, um, how, how, how does the dental economy look in Poland today with the COVID? Um, um, did, how much did it contract in 2020? The United States, uh, a lot of them are, you know, we were closed two months. So, you know, that, that was a big contraction. Um, was 2020 a contraction over 2019? And now that we're just starting the second month of 2021, uh, does 20, how does 2021 look to you right now? On, I, was, dental? I was, you know, as, as, a, as a holistic freak, I didn't close my office because it was not mandatory. Uh, first, it was a huge fright because it was the first uh, pandemic in the uh, nowadays history of Poland. So uh, many of my, of my colleagues said, stay home, stay home, stay safe, and you know, lock everything out because we don't know what to do. Even if we had, I don't know, a couple of hundreds COVID cases in the world, in Poland. So it was night and after that, when we have thousands and thousands, everybody's open. But no logic in it. Okay. I use, of course, I used uh, uh, UV lights. Uh, I used ozone generator after hours, huge cannon, ozone a cannon straight from China. So it's like we usually open the windows, I don't know, seven or eight hours after this ozonation. It's still not breathable air. So we know we are totally sure that everything was killed. Uh, beautifully, and then uh, I had no problems. It was a good year. And the uh, people who uh, I was talking to, uh, because nobody's going, doing uh, statistics like, like, like this in dentistry. So these people who are who were practicing after first shock and little diminish of, of the flow of the patient, uh, they said that it was a good year, actually. It's a, they, they and I also complain. want to ask you another question. You know, um, the orthodontists debate against each other about orthodontics and malocclusions and the dentist, yes. you know, all that yes. stuff. But now it's totally different. We have do-it-yourself orthodontics where people are going to take oral scanning and uh, send the trays direct. has no, smile no, direct. It's not, What's because that? It's, not it's scraping teeth. Not, it's not orthodontics. It's pushing the door to the crooked frame against all odds, against but are, all but is, but is that taking off in Poland? Do they have do it yourself uh, direct to consumer? A very small, small uh, part, of course. You know, it's uh, it's the funny thing because uh, 
this whole digital orthodontics, uh, all the factory design tooth movement, like Invisalign or other things when you just scan the patient's mouth and put the, all the, uh, I don't know, like it's, it's in states, but I just, I just ask one simple question. When there will be any complications, who is going to court? Designer of this bite in your company or me, dentist? No, 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 no. We have no responsibility whatsoever. So I said, thank you for these people. And uh, if somebody is going to the so-called straightening teeth or also don't take do it yourself, uh, people are okay. If somebody wants to go to the local uh, uh, dealer to buy some crack and he has a uh, you know, driving license, he's adult, he knows what he's doing, okay, it's your, his problem. If somebody is going to, I don't know, primitive jungle and somebody, uh, the, the, the uh, I don't know, cannibal tribes will leave him with the only bones left, Okay, he knows what he was what he was doing. If somebody adult is doing something consciously, I cannot uh, do anything about it. And I don't, you know, I I stop convincing people who are not interested. Or uh, I'm I'm a, I'm a teacher. I'm a instructor. I'm doing this for almost thirty years, and I stopped. Uh, convincing general public. If somebody is interesting in the knowledge I have, uh, I will be more than willing to share it with you. But, but they are not, I'm not trying to change the world. Mother Teresa once said, you want to change the world? Go home and love your family. And probably this is the guidance I use every day. To be better human, better doctor, better orthodontist, better holistic doctor, healer, you may say, because I know that it will help these people who are willing to be treated by me. And docere, as you said once, it's in Latin is to teach. So I still try to teach these people as much uh, knowledge, how to be healthy, stay healthy, stay positive, stay leveled in every other dimension you can imagine. And this way, I want to, them to, 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 to be a better person, live longer, happier. And this is the, my, the main part. And after all, at the end of the day, I want to return home. And I said, I've done this. This day was good because I've done something good. I don't have to learn, earn the, all the money in the world. It's not my goal. Somebody, if somebody is feeling happy at the end of the day, okay, it's, it's his choice, his pathway. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not criticizing. I'm not the judging. Mine is rather go to the inner peace and enlightenment. You probably it sounds funny or cliche, but still, it's my approach to 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 to, to professional life also, to be in level, to be uh, as much helpful to other human beings. Uh, because when people are coming to me with the difficult cases, usually they are unhappy, they are in pain, they are after some accidents, they have huge problems, very in various parts, aspects of his their health. And when they are leaving, I see the improvement, how I see the, how people flourish after, for example, taking the pain out, straightening the posture, uh, leaving all the traumas away. Suddenly it's totally different human. And they are saying that uh, they left improved. And it's probably the biggest gift I can grab home at the end of the day. Well, on that note, I think we're out of time. Um, I've yeah. always, uh, was, was there anything you want to talk about that we didn't get around to? Yeah, perfect. 
All right. Um, man, I love you to death. My God, you're, I, you were the first dentist I met in Poland. My gosh, uh, it was just uh, yeah. memories, memories, memories. And a shout out yeah. to Brock Rondo and all those mm-hmm. amazing people. Uh, but I've always, um, I've always admired your intelligence, your think outside the box. Um, you, you wouldn't care if every single dentist in Poland, Russia, and Germany uh, disagreed with you. If you, if, if you know, you, you just a, a man of steel. You really are, and your family was uh, amazing. I can't believe it. With a few scars, with a well, few scars, but see, it's normal. It's life. And when I was at your house, your boys were so little, and now they've uh, they've moved on, and now they're um, what would you say? One's working in London, and one's in Chicago. Yeah, the the, the, the other should be in the Chicago. He's doing PhD online, and he has a, a night school because he has to stay at night awake. And I using various techniques to, to you know, the holistic techniques to keep keep his attention at the right level because he's doing the political science uh, study at the Northwestern University. And for those you don't know, in the United States, um, the number one Polish uh, destination outside of Warsaw is actually Chicago. Uh, if you live in California, you might uh, not realize that, but when you go to um, Chicago, I, I think it's one in every seven people is um, Polish descendant. Chicago and Detroit are the biggest concentration of Poles yeah. in, in the United States. All right, mm-hmm. my man. Have a great day. Tell your wife it gets low, and I can't wait to see you again in Warsaw. You're totally invited. Okay. <laughs> Have a good day.